Oh, hello. My, my name's Tom Valumi. Uh, I'm a senior lecturer here at the Blizzard Institute, the Queen Mary University of London. And first of all, I'd just like to thank the JCI for giving us this opportunity to make this video uh, and, of course, for accepting our paper for publication. Um, our group's been involved in studying uh, this rare bone marrow failure syndrome called dyskeratosis congenita quite a number of years now. Um, we first got into this subject really through my colleague Indijit Dokal, who recognised this as an interesting syndrome that was not really being well studied. So DC, this dyskeratosis congenita, is clearly a heterogeneous disorder, both genetically and phenotypically. Patients present with a kind of big range of uh, symptoms and spectrum of disease, from late onset to very early severe cases, with a multi-system disorder affecting multiple tissues. Um, through the uh, efforts we've made at identifying genes that cause this disease, we now believe that the underlying basis is a, a defect in telomere maintenance. So this study really begins with a family from Birmingham, referred to as two very young children, age, presenting age of three and five years, um, with classic features of the disease, mucocutaneous features, uh, bone marrow failure, interestingly neurological abnormalities, this is cerebellar hyperplasia, and the hallmark of the disease, very short telomeres. It was Amanda Wong who, in the lab, who first picked up from exome data. Exome sequencing data is our ability to sequence all the coding regions of the gene, genome. She picked up on this homozygous missense variant in the two affected children. Interestingly, we then found a second uh, individual, homozygous again, this time for a splice site variant, again from Pakistani origin, or consanguineous families. And this would, we know, to give rise to a small deletion in the protein sequence. And for me, the clincher was when we found the third family. Now, this person was a compound heterozygote for these two indels. Uh, and this predicted to give this small deletion to the protein, one of them, the other one a truncating protein. And it was this third family that really made this gene, PAN, beyond doubt, the disease-causing gene. I was able, very lucky then at this stage, to have Hemant Tumala in the lab who picks up the story and was able to run away with it. Hi, I'm Hemant Tumala, postdoc under Dr. Tom Williamy and Professor Indrajit Dukal. When Tom and Amanda picked up this gene to be, that is shown to be mutated in three unrelated families from four individual cases, and indeed it is, it, it is very significantly shown to be a, a standout gene from all the others, and it has no previous connection to the telomere biology, I thought this a bit quite challenging. So what is PAN? PAN is a polyribose specific nucleus and it functions as an exonucleus enzyme. The assays that for PAN's function have been well characterized and we adopted a particular assay called in vitro deadylation assay. So in order to perform this assay, we need the, obviously the, the patient sample. So here we have the patient sample and we need a RNA substrate which has a poly A tails. And when I did this assay, this is where something interesting start to happen. Okay, well, I just want to take you back to this amazing day when Hammond brought me down to the lab and showed me this beautiful gel. What I love about this gel, the beautiful blue colour on the white screen, the lovely fleck to the, the uncut fragment here, the, un, the untrimmed fragment here. There's clearly something going on down here where we're seeing cleave products or trimmed products. But what jumped out at me straight away was this middle track here. There's a clear ladder showing, which is not seen in any of the other tracks. And I knew our, our case was in there somewhere. As told by Tom, there is definitely the affected case on the gel. As you can see here, it is well annotated. You can see the case, the affected sample, clearly showing a ladder-like appearance with the intermediate cleaved products. Most of the previous work on PAN has related this deadylation defect to P53 and PAN forming as a complex upon DNA damage and thereby regulating deadylation process. So we know that P53 is a guardian of the genome and it is a DNA damage response gene. So therefore we looked at the P53 regulation in the patient cells and what we observed is the altered kinetics of the P53 response upon DNA damage in the patient cells when you compare to the H-match control and 
his own father, unaffected father. Upon UND damage, we also looked at the cell viability and we found that the, case, the affected case has reduced number of cells and most of the cells which survived are actually arrested in G2M phase. So how these readouts connect to the telomere biology? We saw deadenylation deficiency, we saw altered DNA damage response and we also saw GTM phase arrest in the patient cells. Most importantly, we also know that these patients have short telomeres. Then we took the peripheral blood sample and looked for telomere gene transcript levels by quantitative RT-PCR. Strikingly, we found out of the genes, telomeric genes analyzed, we found four of them, such as TERF1, DKC1, and RTL, as well as TERC, SNORNA, all these uh, transcript levels were found to be reduced in the patient cells when you compare it to the controls. And this is consistent in also in the EBV cell lines which we raised from the patient cells. This clearly states that PAN, directly or indirectly, causes reduction in the telomeric mRNA stability. Well, to my knowledge, this is the first example of a Mendelian disease being caused by defects in deadenylation, the whole pathway. I hope you've uh, felt our excitement in this discovery as we came through the process of finding out about these families. Uh, but, but the key for me really lies in our ability to go back to the families. And what drives me in my research, there's no doubt about it, is not just the excitement in the lab, but the ability to translate that back to the patients themselves. So from the patient and back to the patient is key to the, what drives me on.